Hey everyone, before we dive into today's episode, I just want to give a shout out to CallCast. CallCast is an app that allows you to record phone interviews for podcasts such as this one. You can either record by yourself or with another person, no matter where you are. The creator of the app, Adam, was very helpful and answered all of my questions regarding the app. I should warn you that the app is still in beta testing, but it still gets the job done for people like me who don't have the equipment to make phone interviews possible. For more info, go to callcast.co and tell them Tyler sent you. And now, on with the show. Fresh, Fresh out, out the, the box. box. Stop. Stop. Look and watch. Ready, Ready yet? yet? Get, Get set. set. It's, it's Kevin, Kevin Coppola, Coppola and Heath Seifert on the Not Another, Another Interview Show podcast. podcast. Everyone and welcome to another episode of the Not Another Interview Show podcast. I'm your host Tyler Green, and with me today are two very special guests. If you were born in the '90s like me, then it's a very good chance that you've grown up with a show that these two have been involved in. They're the creative forces behind such shows as Austin and Alley, as well as numerous Nickelodeon shows, including spots as writers and producers on the topic of today's discussion, the sketch comedy show All That. Please welcome to the show Kevin Coppolo and Heath Seifert. How are you guys? Hey, how's it going, Tyler? Thanks for having us. Yeah, very excited. No problem. Uh, so you guys have a, a, a long-lasting partnership. So how did you guys start working together? That is a very good question. Uh, it is a long uh, time that we have been friends. We were friends first. We met in the mid-'80s. Um, this is Heath. I was working at a pizza place for one hour a day. It's a very exciting story. Uh, during lunch at high school. And one of the guys I worked with at the pizza place was good friends with Kevin, and we met and hit it off and became good friends. Uh, and we were always coming up with funny ideas and talking about writing stuff together, and that led to us actually <laughs> writing together Doing professionally um, yeah. years later. And uh, the all and, that and was first, really one of our first... Uh, it was the first job we took together. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. We found out about it, and we got together one night and wrote a whole bunch of sketches, uh, turned them in, and we got hired. And it was like the rest. We've been working ever since. Oh wow! So were you guys, were you guys like writing sketches by yourselves before that, or? I always, I was. This is Kevin speaking, by the way. I was always uh, interested in sketches because I loved Saturday Night Live when I was growing up. So I used to think kind of in sketches. I used to write because it's a lot easier to do that than sitting down and write a sitcom back in the day. So I would just write sketches and think of ideas and stuff like that. But I never really thought I had an outlet for them. So when I found out about this show, you know, all that. I, I mean, you know. Yeah. This it, this is show. This is like the show we were born to work on. Yeah. We we literally, like, when we heard they were trying to do this Saturday Night Live for kids and looking for writers, uh, and we knew we had this opportunity to go in an interview for it, like Kevin said, we stayed up all night writing sketches and coming up with ideas, and we went in and pitched, I don't know, like 30, 35 ideas um, the next day. We only realized a couple years later that most people go in and pitch, like, three or four ideas, um, but literally everything we pitched at that first meeting ended up on the air within you know by yeah. the end of season two yeah oh wow okay so what were uh what were some of those sketches what were what were the some of the first ones that you guys wrote together oh wow i think uh good burger uh detective dan uh, uh i think island girls was in there and, um and yeah some, i think the complaint department sketch yeah complaint maybe, department uh which ended up as a Lori bass vehicle um and there maybe Randy and Mandy. Oh yeah, I think so. Might have been in that first batch. The, the kids who cook with chocolate. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I do have some questions about those specific uh, specific sketches too, but I do want to ask, um, did you guys have a did you guys have a hand in the, in the audition process for the original show? No, because we came in while they were shooting the pilot, so they had already just got the kit. So we missed. We didn't. We didn't work on the actual pilot. We came in. Episode uh, one, yeah. On. Episode one, and everyone after that, and through up through season six. So we did yeah. about 125 episodes or something. Yeah, we we were there through season six, and we came back this year for season eleven. 
And thank God you guys did it because the the reboot has the same all that style that it's had, you know, since these past twenty five years. So thank thank the Lord. We're glad you guys are back. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Sure. So uh, yeah, the first the first half of the season we came on as consulting producers because we were we had a prior commitment. Uh, and then that went away. So now we're executive producers again and head writers and for the second half of the first season. So we, so now we're kind of back in our old seat. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like you guys never left. Cause especially, especially like, for example, watching the sketches with Kel and Keenan and, and Josh server, it's like the show never ended. It's like they just kept going and going and it's, except they just got older, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We were talking to Lori Beth the other day and she was saying something about how what's weird is how not weird it feels like just to get back in. It's like it never ended and it like he never stopped. Um, but for us coming back and being able to do it and seeing all those people um, and even a lot of the crew and people behind the scenes, it's like almost like a mini high school reunion every week. Somebody different from the past shows up to visit the set every week. And uh, it's pretty surreal, but it's pretty amazing. Yeah, totally. And I've noticed, I've noticed going through the credits of this season of all that that you guys are consulting producers. What exactly does that entail? Well, that was that was what we were saying. The first, so the first half of this season, we did 13 episodes, and we came on as consulting producers, where we were basically uh, we were kind of brought in to revamp a lot of the old stuff. Like we were writing all the Good Burgers and uh, the Coach Creighton, the Loud Librarian, things that we had created back in the day. And um, and then as well as contributing some fresh uh, material because we wanted new characters to do, but we weren't running it yet. We were just consulting and we were actually working on another pilot while we were doing that. We were working on another show, but we were we were involved, but not as heavily involved we were involved in a lot of the writing yeah we were just coming off of uh we did one season of the show cousins for life which we created for nickelodeon um and i think when all that started up this season uh it wasn't uh certain whether or not cousins for life would be coming back so i think they kind of just created a position for us uh that allowed us to be here and contribute but also um would make it so that we could leave and go do cousins for life if it came back um and then once we found out it wasn't coming back. Then. They wanted, yeah, they they wanted us to stay in that position. I mean, they wanted to move us into the other position. Oh wow. Okay. So yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. And I did I did watch the uh, the Coach Creighton and Beyonce sketch that came out today. Yeah. And <laughs> very all right. Very good. The next week's show, but they put that into yeah yeah that was a fun one. <laughs> Yeah, they're met. it's funny because we're trying to we're trying to write some of these you know older old old characters with with these fresh new kids and it's it's really fun to do that to overlap them and uh, that's it's it's not much of a challenge it's just pretty fun because the new kids are so good they fit right in you know they start off as customers at Good Burger or or employees at Good Burger or you know they're they're just we're weaving them into into the other sketches so they can have you know. Yeah, obviously, in that Coach Creighton, I think you just watched uh, Gabby's amazing as uh, Beyonce. Oh, yeah. I, I I actually watched the pilot with some friends. Of, well, more so, not the pilot as much as the first episode of season 11. Yeah, because, you right, know, right. Yeah. still the same show. But they were they were blown away by how, how great the impressions were in the first sketch. I forget the name of it, but it had... Gabby is Beyonce. Nathan Janik is Ariana Grande. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was the uh, the masked singer. Yeah, it was I don't remember Masked singer, masked dancer, yeah, some kind of sketch like that. But, yeah, it was just – I think that was created to be just an opportunity to introduce a lot of the kids yeah, and yeah. show off some of their impressions. And uh, Yeah, uh, Nathan's Ariana is – it's almost too good. It's pretty amazing. Uncanny, yeah. He gets in that makeup and walks around, and I see people like on the lot, like turning their heads and freaking out. They think that it's Ariana. Yeah, when I first when I first saw him as Ariana Grande, I was like, "Oh my god, that's that's him." That, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was like a, a totally different kid entirely. It was incredible. Well, we just thought he came up, to, I guess, to show us the makeup and the hair, and, and I just thought, "Oh, Ariana Grande's in our office." I really did not. <laughs> I swear, I did not think it was him because I didn't even know they were going to do that because we were just again. We we weren't in, even involved in that particular sketch. We just I had no idea, and then I see the guy. I'm like, oh wow, that's Nathan. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. What was it? What was it that like was a being plus. the new kids for the? Ooh, what were we saying? No, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. What were you saying? 
I was just going to say, uh, what was it like meeting the new kids for the first time? Going back to, for example, going back to my earlier question, were you guys involved with the uh, audition process for the new reboot? Or? Well, they were showing us a lot of the tapes along the way, but we didn't make any of the final decisions until uh, the, the, I mean, there were some towards the end. We probably we were, expressed some opinions, yeah. like I think she would be great yeah. or he would yeah, be great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but there were a lot of people involved and a lot of decisions being made. Um, we were very excited watching the audition tapes, and there was a lot of people coming by, uh, and a lot of really, really strong candidates. And so for us, I think they, you know, ended up casting a pretty amazing ensemble. And um, and, and we just added a new featuring uh, player. We had a lot to do with that because we started watching more auditions uh, after the first half of the season, and so we were pretty integral in this. The new girl, Aria. Uh, Aria Brooks, who you'll be seeing soon. Yeah, she's, she's a, really good. Yeah, she's a, yeah, uh, very yeah. excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, it was really fun to meet all the kids and to talk to them. And they're real kids, too. So to, like, actually, like, listen to them and hear what they're excited about and what they like to watch on TV and what do they think is funny. Because it's different than it was in the 90s. Uh, you know, people have evolved. <laughs> yeah. And some of the stuff we used to think is very funny uh, maybe isn't as funny today well i mean well fair enough i mean i can totally see where you guys are coming from but a lot of the a lot of the sketches that you guys have written like back in the 90s like for example good burger detective dan they still translate really well in you know the 2010s yeah we also uh we're we, we are big fans of physical humor we like to put that in all of our sketches and physical humor always plays just for some reason for anybody it just it it knows no boundaries and I think with both those examples, uh, those are both really good examples of characters that are what we like to call them selectively intelligent. And I think uh, that goes a long way with comedy. Yeah. People who aren't quite getting things. Yeah, that that totally that totally makes sense. Like you know, you have characters like again Ed from Good Burger or the Complaint Department Lady. Like those are like I think I think what it is is that you guys are able to write characters that don't date the show at all. Like they have like specific charm to them that makes them really funny. And you just, you just got, you know what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I think there are exceptions to the rule, but I think in the old days, especially we attempted to avoid like a lot of current pop culture references um, or a lot of dead on parodies that, unless uh, we believe that people would find them funny if they didn't get the references. Um, and part of that reason is we wanted to be evergreen and not, date ourselves. I think um, in one of those areas where I think humor is different for the audience today is the audience today uh, loves pop culture and parody, and they're used to seeing things generated and turned around so quick and watching short form content on YouTube that they love seeing somebody impersonating Ariana Grande or, or Beyonce. And, and so, you know, we've embraced that and we are doing more of that this time around. And I, and I think that's pretty good because, you know, it is what the audience is looking for. Because I'm, you know, I'm a guy who has like three siblings that I love very much who were around the age that I was when I was watching all that. And, you know, I'm I'm sure that – I don't know if they watch it for sure, but I think that they would – I think that they do. I'll probably have to ask. But I know that, you know, being around them enough tells me that, you know, they would totally enjoy a lot of what all that has to offer. You know, not just the pop culture references, but, you know, the characters too because that was what – drew me to all that as a kid was you know just like these funny characters that i always loved seeing you know yeah yeah and that's the stuff that always works the best at the end of the day are these larger than life characters that you enjoy being around oh yeah totally for sure um so yeah i also so since we're since we're on the subject of the, of the classic all that i do want to ask one question i want to go from off screen to on screen with uh mr kevin coppolo uh yeah. So for those who for those yeah. who don't know, um, Kevin had a character on the show who was the stage manager manager of all that. So the so the show would usually open with a sketch with the cast, you know, just being themselves, and then Kevin would come in as the stage manager, and he would say, five minutes. The show starts in five minutes." <laughs> I did know that. Yeah. And anytime, <laughs> and and it didn't matter if it was a half hour, two minutes. It, right. It was always five minutes. Yeah. All great characters <laughs> have a good catchphrase. Yeah. 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 And he still and he still does it to this day, folks. So, uh, <laughs> well, so Kevin, how did you, how did that role come to be? How, how did you, how did that character 
I think what happened from? was I think that what happened was we went out. You know, we're all from Los Angeles, and when we took the show out to Florida, there weren't a lot of uh, uh, actors out there to to choose from. It wasn't the same type of acting pool that we had out here. And uh, you know, we used to read all of our sketches out loud. We do things, and I think I was reading a sketch once, and uh, Brian Robbins, uh, the creator of the show. Uh, said, why don't you just play the dad? It was some dad in, in like a repairman sketch. And I just went, wow, I've never really acted before, but okay, you know, I'll do it. And the next thing I know, I was oh, doing wow, it. Oh, yeah. wow, What'd you say? I said, I said, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt. So I, uh, next thing I know, I was doing it. And then, I don't know, this character came up. We didn't, we didn't really want the kids being mean to each other at the beginning of the shows while they were themselves. So we figured we would have an adult character in there. And somehow the stage manager character came up. And I'm just happy to this day that the name was Kevin because now if anybody ever noticed me, they go, are you Kevin? I could say yes because I wouldn't want to go by somebody else's name. So <laughs> I, I am pretty happy about that. But I ended up in a lot of them. I, I prob- probably – more definitely somewhere between 50 and 100 of them. <laughs> when we were shooting oh, wow. the show in Orlando, it was a little bit like the Wild West, West and it was kind of like anything goes. And I think a lot of times just yeah. for fun, we'd be like, oh, what if this was just all the writers played the pizza delivery guy? Yeah. And, you know. and he's in a lot of them, too. He plays like various hobos oh, yeah. and policemen. And- yeah, so I can't we- act, though. So like yeah. you'll see me in the background a lot. I hand a lot of people like water and soda and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, – oh, sorry to interrupt, but it's funny that you mentioned that because I was actually watching some episodes of all that on Pluto TV, and I, I, saw, one of the, uh, I saw one of the sketches that Heath was in, which was the uh, – I, well, I think he was in, which was the, uh, milk, which was the ice cream – truck sketch oh, yeah. Josh Thurber. oh i i was the i think i drove the ice cream truck yes yeah and josh right. server was I, chasing you yeah 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 that it. was me driving the ice cream truck that was uh we shot that in the back lot of universal uh florida yeah universal florida yeah that I, was I like had a feeling because i i had a feeling about that because i'm a i'm a very big theme park nerd as well and i <laughs> know universal when i yeah. see it so Oh yeah, that was Universal, and we used to. Um, it was. I think that was part of a week where we were going to shoot. Like we had this idea, we were going to shoot two sketches on location a day, and get ten sketches that week, and shoot everything single camera style to break it up, and then just. Well, then we realized that it rains every about forty-five minutes in Florida, so we ended up only doing how many? I think we ended up shooting four sketches. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That week instead we really of really wanted to do remote pieces. You know, we got very excited. And so that was one of the ones we shot. We were very excited about it. Still are. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's that's great. It's great that you guys are able to have both the presence off screen and on screen. Because you know, it it shows that you guys are really appreci- appreciated in the show. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It, it was it <laughs> and was that, pretty fun. And, and then yeah, I ended up on, I ended up on figure it out because of that too. And then I used to be on like every day. It's so all of a sudden I found myself just on TV a lot. And then um, when that ended, people always thought, you know, they'd come up to me and they'd say, well, what are you acting in now? And I'd like, well, nothing. You know, I'm not, <laughs> I wasn't I'm a writer. Actor yeah. then. I don't, and I don't think people really realized or knew that I wrote and produced the show. So that was always kind of a, an odd thing. But, you know, it's okay. Neither good nor bad. Yeah, like has any, has anybody ever recognized you guys from being on all that or figure it out? Well, people it recognize happens. me from being on all all that definitely because you know with the whole five minutes thing, but and especially because the figure it out is on every day. But um, it's definitely waned over the past. We have a lot of like uh, PAs that are working on our show and they're just starting out and they kind of remember that those shows and some of them ask me, wait a minute, were you on the show? You know that kind of stuff, but. Nothing to uh, – I don't get recognized that much. When when we were casting Austin and Allie, um, when Rainey Rodriguez came in, who ended up playing Trish on the show, uh, she came in with – and her brother Rico was with her, who's also an actor. And they uh, apparently recognized Kevin and got starstruck and uh, <laughs> nervous. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Funny, I was watching the – I was watching the Paley Live this morning of the Austin and Allie panel. So, yeah. Ah. Oh yeah, we did that after the season. Yeah. Yeah, that was really another fun. another show you guys did that I sort of grew up with. Kind of, oh wow! Kind of after my time, but I I was old enough to you know watch the first season. So 
Yeah, that was a really fun show. We still keep in touch with all four of those uh, guys. Oh, boy. Talked to Caleb yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're oh. great, but you know they're they're all grown up and you know adults. Yeah, we right? we kind of think of them as like our kids or you know their family and yeah now they're grown up and out of the house and it's and it's lonely but we do talk to them every <laughs> yeah. now and then. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing looking at the relationship you guys have had with the kids on that show. Looking, you know, just looking up, you know, everything about the show and what you guys have done. Yeah, it was yeah. an amazingly tight. You know, it was a, a, the, an incredible cast and crew. Yeah, and we were really and, close and, for a and long the time. The difference there was too; they were they were older than say the all that kids back in the day. So you know, we were kind of in Florida with all those kids, and once in a while, you know, when you hang out with them, you go miniature golfing or you know, and they didn't stay out that late or you know, we kind of hung out with Lori Beth the most because she was basically even like nineteen or twenty back then. You know, she was she was older. She, she was definitely an older yeah. than the rest of the all that cast and closer oh, to yeah. us. In yeah, she was a uh, she was roughly around my age when she started that show. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because I think she started. She was probably eighteen. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, so we, you know, and then we saw, and back then it was really interesting because we saw, you know, Keenan and Kel on their, you know, fourteenth and fifteenth birthdays and twentieth birthdays. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So. So now we can talk about uh, the all that reboot. So, what? How did you guys? How did you guys get back in, back in the saddle with that? Well, I mean, I think it was. I'm not going to say it was a no-brainer to include us, but obviously we were very involved with the early years of the show and and defining the voice of the show, um, with a bunch of other people. And and um, as soon as. I'd say when Brian Robbins came back and took over as the president of Nickelodeon uh, before it was even announced, I think a lot of people were reaching out to us like, ooh, Brian's in charge. I bet you they're going to bring back all that and you guys will work on it. We're like, okay, cool. We're, we're waiting for the phone call. Um, but I'm sure as soon as they you know, wanted to move forward in that direction, we were probably one of the first calls they made. We had been pitching you know, for a while anyway. Before Brian came back, we'd been telling him, uh, whoever would listen that you guys should be doing a sketch comedy show. It's the way to go. And we yeah. want to work on it. And <laughs> we're the sketch comedy people. So, yeah. So, Oh yeah, totally. We were, and, and it was weird because we were just already here. We were already at Nickelodeon. So we're just kind of sitting there waiting for our next gig here. Cause we were right in between gigs. So it kind of worked. The timing of it worked really well for us. Uh, so. That's amazing too, and I I do have to agree. You know, it is really surprising that Nickelodeon went as long as it did without you know a sketch comedy show because I think uh, because I feel like yeah. it really gives kids a, a voice and you know like just being themselves and just being wacky and having a really good sense of humor. You know, and, and it's also a great uh, t- uh, uh, training ground for all these kids and and you know look at all the shows that came from all that and you know and, and Dan had Dan Schneider had a whole bunch of shows from that show and it was just great it's a great training ground I mean Keenan it's, it's a good the farm Amanda, system the, the Amanda show uh, you know Drake and jo- all those came from the all roots that. of it came from all that you know all the way up to yeah, Icarly and, they, and all the, you know oh yeah and it's it's incredible it's incredible like this the amount of stars you that that show has brought onto onto you know the scene and I'm I wouldn't be surprised if they're are some stars in the reboot themselves, you know? Well, that, that's what we're hoping. I mean, that's, that, that's how it's done. I mean, it's really fun. You want to see more of these kids in, in other circumstances and in other shows. So I, I would think that would be a no-brainer, but we'll, we'll see. You know, again, the, I, you know, again, I thought they should have had all that on for the last 20 years, but that's just me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, th- I think uh, Brian shares our feeling that it should have never yeah. been off the air. Yeah. Oh, no, I totally... I totally agree because I, like I said, I grew up with all that since I was at least four or five and I, I watched all of it as a kid and, and then revisiting it with, you know, the, with, with the reruns on Team Nick and stuff, you know, that like really yeah, solidified yeah. my, my love for the show. So uh, like it was uh, great. It was great that the show. It was great that the show still had, you know, a bit of a platform even after it was, you know, even after it ended, you know? Yeah, yeah, and the the Good Burger movie certainly helped with that. And... Oh, for sure. Another another thing of yours I watched uh, last night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Good Burger movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a really speaking fun. Of, one. And speaking of on screen appearances, uh, 
you can see Kevin Coppola in that movie as well, but I won't tell you yeah, and, and, who plays. And I'm standing right behind him. I'm, yeah. I am also in that shot. But uh, I, Oh, my I God, you a, are? Yeah, so I, I'm, a, I'm, yeah. I'm the clown on the left. I'm one of the clowns. I had, right, he's like clown number two or something, and I had the one line. That's why I kind of... Where's that yeah. dang dog? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's I guess, uh, that's one of my favorites. Is, I guess the real question is, did the dog ever come back? Are those clowns still uh, strange to the day? <laughs> you know, I never saw the dog again, so I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't think it did. No. Oh, what a shame. It was a, it was a very yeah. cute dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a, that was a really fun day. I yeah, when we shot that, that, the other clowns were all like union clowns, because I guess that's like a weird rule. And they were all like um, annoyed that we didn't like – bring our own shoes that, that like wardrobe department had closed yeah. us and so they were like really snobby and like at lunch like we were walking with our trays it was like in high school and we were going to sit and like the clowns all moved over so that we could sit at the table with them and it was very odd yeah <laughs> oh my god that is oh my god i have a new appreciation for that scene now <laughs> all right, yeah. so going back to uh <laughs> going back to the writing process um so you guys, of course, have been writing for the show for 25 years now. So you guys are more than experienced with working on the show. So what is a what's a normal week like in the All That Writers Room? Uh, it's you know it changes depending on whether we're in production or not. So in in pre-production, the idea is to gather as many sketches as humanly possible. Um, we usually sit around and bat around ideas with uh we have an awesome writing staff seven more seven writers i think in our writing staff and so we'll just sit there and kind of bat around ideas there might be some mandates from the network like you know we want more pop culture sketches or we need a show a sketch about gamers or whatever and so we'll we'll bat around ideas for a couple days we have um a great writers uh, script department that takes great notes um, and usually after a few days, we'll start uh, assigning sketches. People will pitch their own or, or we'll, based on those ideas that come out of the meeting, we'll say, hey, why don't you go write this or why don't you go write this? Writers will go off and do first drafts, and then we like to rewrite those with the room before we show them to anybody else. We like everything to be in as good a shape as possible. And, and, and we uh, like kind of things to be in the same voice, you know? So uh, since we've been kind of, writing in that voice for so long that we kind of guide them in that direction. That, that's our, you know, that's what we attempt to do. So then we get them in shape and then we send them on to the network for the ultimate approval. And then, uh, and then we start, we start putting shooting. them in the shows. We start going, oh, this will be in week one. This will be in week two. Oh, you know, you know, with something like Good Burger, we might shoot three of those three weeks in a row. It doesn't mean it's going to air three weeks in a row because we shoot – about a show and a third a week. We shoot more than a show a week, which is pretty awesome. Um, so because of that, you know, to save money, we'll put up the Good Burger set, leave it up for three straight weeks, shoot them, um, and then end up airing it in episodes one, six, and 13. You know, and we like to have that luxury we, we after also, the fact. We also don't know what sketch is going to recur. So if you did, say, a loud library, you really don't know if you're going to do another one yet. You don't know if it's going to be a hit. So a lot of things are kind of on the back burner. So we'll write... We have some sketches uh, that we have right now that we can't wait to shoot because we we have we know in our gut they're going to be recurring characters, but we still have to kind of hold off. You have to so, kind of see the audience reaction. Yeah, we want to see the audience sure. reaction and how they turn out, but we still write one or two more. Just we've done this long enough ready. that you kind of know, but yeah. like something with like a, a you know a few things this year, like coffee, 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 or. The babies yeah. Oh, yeah. or Marie you, Kiddo. You know you want to do There's more. There's stuff that like when you shoot, you're like, you know, the audience is gonna love this. Uh, let's shoot three of these, you know. So 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 right when we start our when we started this part of the season, we went out and uh, we just made sure we had a lot of things that we knew that could repeat, so we can shoot them on the earlier side. So then you could actually repeat them, you know, because we're gonna start catching up with ourselves when we're shooting. So. We think we have that under control. We have some really, really funny new uh, characters that we can't wait to debut. Yeah. I mean, you were, you were asking about a, a typical writing week. Uh, when we're in production, you know, among a million other things we're doing, it usually starts Monday morning with a table read where the cast reads the script out loud for the network. And 
us and about 60 other people who have gathered to watch. Uh, and based on that, we'll rewrite that week's script. Um, Tuesday, they rehearse it all day and they do what they call what we call a producer run through on Tuesday afternoons where the actors kind of perform the show for us is kind of almost like a play. Uh, based on that, we'll do rewrites. We'll stay Tuesday night as late as we have to rewriting that. Uh, Wednesday, they rehearse and do it again. Wednesday afternoon, we do a network run through. Uh, and based on that, we rewrite and then we shoot Thursdays and Fridays. Friday night's usually a live audience show. And we try to shoot the, the more difficult stuff, you know, the people flying through walls and ceilings. You know, we do some pretty crazy, wacky stunts. So we shoot those primarily on Thursday so we don't have to have a live audience waiting and watching through the whole process. So we have to kind of figure out the easier, so to speak, ones to shoot. We shoot those on Thursday. Um, yeah, the easier ones are Friday in front of the audience. And yeah, then, right, uh, right. you know, and even as we're shooting, we'll keep coming up with new jokes or better lines and we'll we'll throw new jokes in there all the time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I can totally I can totally see where you guys are coming from with that. Uh and speaking of the writing process, how many how much how much input do the kids on the show have in the writing process? Well, a lot of times they add things during the the week during their uh, rehearsals and during their uh and and uh a lot of it's really good, you know. A lot of times they come up with little a little catchphrase or a little something or another line. Sure, they might adjust the line. It might be as simple as just it feels more natural to say it this way instead of that way, and that'll, that's like we're like, okay, whatever. Sometimes they'll come up with a good or funny joke that they want to add, and they'll try it on the floor, and if we yeah. like it, we'll add it to the script, and if we don't like it, we'll say, nice try, thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, and we'll talk to them a lot of times, too, and they'll come to us and say, hey, you know, I do these characters. I do... Uh, yeah, we... They'll show us, you know, they'll come upstairs and just show us characters that they have, old, you know, they, how they play an old man or... or I do an angry different, coach. Yeah, or different accents that they have, and we're, we're always interested in that. Or if we're coming up with something that, let's just say, needs an accent, we'll kind of hunt around and ask, you know, a couple of them if they can do whatever accent we need. And we kind of work on it from that way, too. And usually, you know, we have eight kids now. We can find someone to fill just about everything we ever write, you know? So... We're never at a loss, put it that way. Yeah, it's amazing that you have the resources you have, especially, especially once again with the, how talented the kids on the show are. Like every single one of those kids are amazing. Yeah, it's a really strong cast, and they're it's amazing how young they are and how good they are already out of the gate. And they really do complement each other well. So there's not a lot of crazy overlap, you know, in terms of oh, this could be, you know, anybody could take this. Like, we're really and, able to write for each individual and, and actor. Ju and just like back in the day, uh, we, we, just do, we don't use cue cards. So they're kind of out there without a net. They're on their own, and they, they really nail it. I mean, I couldn't do it. I couldn't remember. Even when I was acting in it, I didn't have that many lines, as many as they do. And it's, it's a hard thing to do, you know? What are, uh, what are some of your favorite sketches that you've written in the – you know, it can be, it'd be either past or present. Well, uh, well, obviously, Good Burger is <laughs> a very special one. Yeah, that's always really and, fun. And that's become a beast of its own. Um, I always like Detective Dan, and the, the, I think the ones I mentioned earlier, I like uh, Island Girls. I always thought was really, really fun because I liked watching Lori Beth and uh, I mean, they made that sketch. You know, it, it's not just anybody. Oh, yeah. So for me, it's always like, sure, it's funny on the page, but then watching them do it. So it was very rewarding. Um, Loud Librarian was really yeah. uh, like a little minor personal victory for us because we had this idea and it cracked us up. And for some reason, not when we first pitched it, people were like, I don't know. Why is that funny? We're like, and I'm like, Cause she's a librarian <laughs> and she's loud. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and like, I don't know. I don't know. And so like we had to kind of fight to get that on the air the first it time. It took a while. It took uh, many a month. And then we got it on, and then next thing you know, they wanted more. They're like, please write four more of these very immediately. Very satisfying. Yeah. So that was very <laughs> satisfying. Yeah, we like that one. And, and again, and again another character. Oops, sorry. Yeah. No, I'm saying Lori Beth killed it. You know, I mean, she made, uh, she was so good. And she still is. Oh, yeah, Lori Beth. Out. It's like, yeah. Yeah, Lori Beth was always one of my favorite cast members growing up. And... Speaking of, I'm going to be seeing her and Danny Tamborelli on the 
nostalgia personified. To oh her. yeah. Oh wow. yes. We we wow. were we were hanging out with her last week, and she was she was on our, on her way to go yeah. hang out with Danny Tamborelli. Yep, yep, yep. She, oh she yeah. Was, she, she just did two weeks with us, did about four or five sketches that we're going to pepper in throughout the thing, and she might be able to come back again towards the end when that little uh, tour she's doing ends. So she's going to be on the road a lot. Where are you seeing her in Philly? Uh. Fifteen minutes away from Philly in Croydon, Pennsylvania. Oh wow! Yeah, you got. Is it at a brewery? She said that a lot of them are at breweries. Which, which oh yeah, it's at the Chamonix Creek. Oh that's yeah, great. Uh, that's great. Hey, if you uh, talk to her, tell her we said you talked to us and we said hello. Oh love. yeah, I was definitely going to say I'm definitely going to mention the podcast to uh, Lori Beth if I see her, and I have met Danny prior to you know later this month, so I will mention to him again, you know, yeah. about the podcast, so. And Danny is one of our favorite yeah, human we beings as have, well. We we, uh, we hope to have Danny on this one. Keep in too. touch with him a bit. Definitely. As well. He's oh, a, gotcha. he's a guys, fellow uh, bass player and hockey fan, so uh, me and him talk a lot. Oh, yeah, totally. I found out. I found out, too, through wearing, the, for, through wearing a shirt of my favorite band that he also listens to that band. So Which band? Which band? Uh, the Posies. Oh, yeah. It's a great band. Do you, do you like Big Star? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, I love I love Big Star. They The Posies got me into Big Star. So, And I'm very I'm very good friends with both Ken Stringfellow and John Rauer, the Posies. So. Oh, wow. That's a that's a pretty good connection. Very cool. Great. Uh, yeah, totally. You'll have, to, you'll, have yeah. to them, you'll have to get them on all that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? I would love to get sure. uh, more like indie indie bands would be phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, so okay, so I do want to talk about the uh, the Good Burger movie too, since you know that is a big part of the all that connection. So uh, where did the idea for the for that come from? Uh, I well, Par- Paramount wanted to do. You know, we were shooting the, on the Paramount lot at the time too. Season and I think, three of all that yeah, was and, on and, the Paramount lot and I think in Paramount LA. Paramount wanted to, along with Nickelodeon Movies, wanted to take one of our characters and make a movie out of him, and, and somehow it just came down to Good Burger. It, it, just, it sort of seemed like the the sketch more. idea that maybe had the most legs in terms of taking a character and telling a bigger story. With yeah. Him. Um, as it was, we were writing so many Good Burger sketches and had so many ideas for him that it was like we were writing first drafts of Good Burger sketches that were like 15 pages and having to cut them down. Yeah. And there was like, um, rather than even just pitch a full movie at first, we wrote like a really long Good Burger that told more of a story and invited the Paramount executives to just come down and watch it be taped in front of the live audience. And it killed, and they were like, yeah, I, I see the potential oh, wow. for this. Go. Is that, is that out there, that Good, Burger, that Good Burger sketch? or? I'm sure it aired. I'm sure we cut it down too. I'm sure it was about. I'm sure we made a, a TV version. Yeah. I, I don't remember which one. No, nope, don't remember. I don't remember it which was, one it was. It was in season three. <laughs> we, yeah, we I know there was a Good Burger special that I've seen on Wikipedia somewhere, but I don't know if it's that or. No, it wouldn't have been that. That might have just been a best of. A collection of them, yeah. So. Somewhere around season five or six, I think we did a few compilations like best of. Um, yeah, but it must have been in season three, whatever, whatever year that was. Ninety nine, ninety eight, uh, yeah, ninety seven, yeah, maybe. But yeah, it was right. it was crazy, and and it definitely went through a few iterations before ending up as as it was. But um, yeah, but, it was really fun, and we were really glad and proud of that movie, and glad that it got made, and rightfully yeah. so. And yeah, it's got a pretty cool cult following, and you know, again, like the show, we meet people constantly that are just raving fans about it. Yeah, so it's it's, and like I said, it's another another movie that you guys have written that ages really well, and has a very has a very good following too. So, yeah, and it has a whole new audience too, because I don't even completely know how, but a lot of uh, I have two daughters that are eleven and nine, and. For apparently a lot of the kids at their school know the movie and love the movie, and I, oh, yeah. I know it, it's on Netflix and it was on HBO before that, and I, I think they've just seen it and like it and have no idea that their friend's dad was one of the writers. But uh, but it's cool to hear that it it lives on. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, let's see, there was something else I wanted to say too. Uh, 
I was going to say, it's probably because of, of the fact that, you know, Kel is making such a huge comeback and, like, putting himself back in the public eye of, you know, like, yeah, these kids yeah. know who he is and they love him. Oh, yeah. Dancing <laughs> yeah. with the Stars, so, he's so good on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, yeah, he's so, yeah, he's amazing. Multi, multi-talented multi guy. I love everything about him. Bless him. Would love to meet him at oh, some yeah. point. Have him yeah. on the show, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, you should come by the. Oh, yeah. If you're ever in LA, come by the set. I mean, you're more than welcome. Yeah, come if to. If I'm ever if I'm ever in LA, I'd love to. You know. Yeah. yeah this could happen. Yeah, we let us know. For sure. All right. So, uh, so I have a couple more questions here. Let me see. Sure. Um, so do you guys have uh, do you guys have any fa- any of your favorite memories from onset of all that? Um. <laughs> There's probably too many to list. Um, I, someone asked me a similar question recently. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'll, this wasn't necessarily an onset moment, but I will tell you that one of my favorite personal moments was when we were first writing and we were in Orlando just writing 24 hours a day around the clock and sleeping at the studio. And But I was living my dream job, so it was amazing. And uh, we wrote a really silly fake commercial called Scholastic Snacks. And it was about edible school supplies for when you get hungry during class. And uh, at the last minute, like on the fourth draft of the sketch, we just added the line, uh, Scholastic Snacks from Dudco, the makers of the cheese phone and whatever, and turned it in and kind of went to bed or something and woke up. And I went downstairs to the set about an hour later and there was a prop guy carving a giant phone out of a block of cheese and I realized it was because I'd written those words. Yeah. And I, I felt like this, I can't explain it, but I was like, oh, my God, I'm yeah. really a writer. Yeah. I've made it. <laughs> and, and it was just a very memorable moment for me. Yeah, that's, that's great. I love, because that's another thing I love about all that is just the, the surrealness and the wackiness of it and, like, all this, all this silly stuff is happening. And I think... I think that all that is why my brain is the way it is now. So, like, I just have a very out there yeah. sense of humor. So, well, there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> you have good taste. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I thank you, thank you, Kevin and Heath. Uh, uh, well, well, I used to, I used to have some pretty wacky things because I've been submerged in pudding uh, more than once. Believe it or not, I have been <laughs> slimed and I, I've had arrows shot at me and meteors. You, uh, you had your head ripped off by Nick Cannon once. Uh, yes, I did. I've uh, had. I I've had more. I mean, it's been crazy. So I have way too many things uh, happen to me that I could even remember. Sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, I, I ate a, a a cricket on figured out. You know, it's just weird. So. And the amazing musical guests we've had. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, even just the first half of this season, having Keenan. Josh and Kel in the same sketch together with Kevin. Yeah, that was but pretty. But kind of being able to hang out on the set and like sit there with them after and and talk, uh, just felt amazing. Yeah, it was it was pretty great. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, okay. So one one more question about you know the both of you. How do you guys keep your partnership so fresh after working together for so many years? Well, basically, what we're doing is so fun that, that it's like they're they're really, you know, it's not like we're writing depressing drama. I guess we're just having fun and we just <laughs> laugh a lot. And and the writers that are writing with us are always really funny and and you know because we're it's not like just the two of us sitting in a room. A lot of t- you know we write together, but then also you know we have a bunch of other people around, producers and writers, to make it fun and you know so we don't get bored with ourselves. You know what I mean? And I think unlike a lot of other partnerships, we actually write every word together. We like we know a lot of other partner uh, writers that are like, I'll write act one while you write act two, and then I'll yeah. see you tomorrow. Uh, we go through everything ourselves. Like we, we filter every line. And I think because of that, our, the quality of our work is stronger. Um, and it's probably a little more challenging as a team to do that. But I think at the end of the day, um, it works because we have a lot of respect for each other. Uh, we know if one of us is arguing more passionately for a line, uh, you know, let them have it. It's, yeah. It's, there's a, you get a lot of crap in the script too. It's like, and, and then if it fails, it's like no harm, no foul. We don't sit there and go, I knew we shouldn't have put, you just do it and you move on and you replace the joke or you do a new joke. And, and sometimes humor subjective. Somebody's going to think it's funny. Someone else isn't. Uh, you, you try things. And in this 
show, like we said, there's there's a lot of different rewrites between Monday and Friday. We rewrite things about 10 times before that Monday. So, you know, if it, uh, you know, we have things we call Monday jokes. So, and, and you try them and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's okay. You move on at the end of the day, everybody wants the same thing. And that's to make the show the best, tightest, funniest show it can be. And, and we also have similar uh, sensibilities and sense of humor. So that helps a great, a great deal. We both like physical comedy. We both like just the same kind of absurdity. Uh, oh yeah. And, and we put that in everything. We put that in our sitcoms as well. So we just, I don't know. It's just kind of, uh, we both understand each other, so it works. All right. Well, I that is some, that is really great advice, and I can't think of a better way to end this interview than than here. So, uh, thank you, great. thank you guys for joining me. Is there anything you guys would like to plug? <laughs> um, no, actually, there's, there, there's a couple of other shows we're working on that we really I don't even know what we can say right now. But so yeah, now, no, just keep your just keep yeah. watching all that. Yeah, especially watch all that and just keep your eyes uh, peeled for some new uh, Kevin and Heath product on yeah. Nickelodeon in the near future as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, Kevin and Heath, thank you so much for joining me. Have a good one. Okay. Thank, thank you, Tyler. Take care. Okay.